In today's video for our Poker 101 course, we're going to talk about variance. And variance is nothing more than the upswings and the downswings in poker. But do you really know what variance is and what causes it? Well, if you don't and you want to find out, stay tuned because that's what we're going to talk about today. Hey guys, welcome to today's video. For those of you that don't know who I am, my name is Alton Harden. I'm the founder of Microgrinder Poker School. And if you don't know what we're all about, we're all about turning beginning and struggling poker players into good winning poker players through solid fundamentals. So if you guys are new to our YouTube channel, consider hitting the subscribe button and subscribe today. And without further ado, let's go ahead and let's get into today's lecture on variance. So today's lecture is all about variance. And variance, like I said right at the beginning of the video, is nothing more than upswings and the downswings in poker. But it's more than that. Do you really know what causes variance and, and really what role it plays in your game? Because a lot of people say they hate variance. Well, I myself, I don't hate variance because a lot of people, when they think about variance, they only think about the downswings. They only think about when they run bad, but they really don't think about when they run good. So variance is unexpected results in the short term. And when I say unexpected results, let's take, for example, I have a quarter here. So I have a quarter, we have heads here, and we flip it around, and we have tails here. If I flip this quarter 10 times, and it flipped and landed on heads 10 times in a row, that would be an unexpected result. Now, let's say that we wanted it to flip on heads. Let's say that every time it lands on heads, we win a dollar. Every time it lands on tails, we lose 50 cents. So on the average, we're going to net 50 cents because we should be netting at 50 cents because we win a dollar when we win, and when we lose, we only give away half of that. So if this flipped 10 times in a row on heads, then we would be happy because we won 10 times in a row when we should only win half of the time. And so when we talk about poker and we talk about variance, it goes both ways. It goes with the upswings and it goes with the downswings. And here's the thing about variance. Here's the important thing to consider is that variance is really what determines it is what is left in the deck. So when they shuffle the deck and they deal it out to everybody, we have our whole cards. And however far we are in the game, whether we're pre-flop, flop, turn a river, we don't know the order of the cards that are left in the deck. They're quote unquote if the dealer dealt them enough or the auto dealer dealt them enough or online if the random card generator made it random, they should be in a random order and those unseen cards should be theoretically in that deck. But we don't know the order that they're going to come out. So if we took a simple example like this with a coin flip, if we did a small sample of say, let's say we flipped this five times in a row and we did maybe 10 samples, we're probably going to see a lot of unexpected results. But what if we did this and we did a sample where we did it five times, then we did it 10 times, then we did it 20 times, we did it 30 times, all the way up to maybe a thousand times. What's going to happen is that those deviations from the norm, those deviations from expected results, they're going to start to normalize. And so while we see results, maybe the results should be like this, a straight line where, you know, we have an equal number of them where this, this is, means 50%. But in the short run, maybe some are up high, some are down low, where a lot land on tails, a lot land on heads. But as we get to larger and larger sample sizes, the normal results are going to start taking effect. So when people talk about variance, it's not uncommon for people to go on huge upswings and huge downswings in a short period of time. So what I want to do to quickly talk about that is I want to jump over to my computer screen and I want to take a look at a variance calculator. And I also want to show you some results that I did in one of my books using a basic coin flip scenario. And the reason I did a basic coin flip scenario is because if we look in poker and specifically all in situations, it's a lot of the times it's going to be coin flip scenario. It's going to be something like ace king or ace queen versus a pocket pair. And if it's two over cards versus a pocket pair, so maybe it's ace king versus pocket queens or pocket jacks, that's a standard coin flip scenario where both of them have roughly 50% equity. And so it's it's not exactly 50% equity. Uh, the pair has 55% equity and ace king has 45% equity but it's close enough to give you guys an example. So let's go ahead and let's jump over to my computer screen um, and then let's take a look. All right, so we jumped over to my computer and 
first thing I want to show you is I did a couple of simulations with a basic coin flip scenario. So I did five different samples of 15 coin flips and then I switched it up and I did five different samples of 150 coin flips. So let's look at the 15 coin flips. Now what we should expect is we should expect close to a 50-50 split. Now, of course, it's not going to be 100% equal to 50-50 because it's not 16 coin flips, it's 15. But it should be pretty darn close if we were looking for expected results. But what you're going to notice in here is you're going to notice that there's some deviations. You should notice some deviations. So, for example, here, there's a bit of a deviation here, 33 on tails and 67 on heads. Same here. 33 on tails and 67 on heads, and same thing for here. And you'll even notice that the 60-40 on both of these isn't even close to 50-50. So what you're noticing here is that you're noticing short-term variance in effect. So short-term unexpected results. Because if we think about mathematics and statistics, in the short term, variance is going to be magnified because unexpected results happen in the short term. They occur in the short term. If I flipped this coin, I still have it in my hand. If I flipped it two times in a row, there's a very good likelihood that it's going to land on heads two times in a row. But if I did it 100 times in a row, there's a very good likelihood that it's going to be a 50-50 split. So the coin flipped with a coin, such as a quarter, is just a really good way to, to show how we can see unexpected results. Now, let's go ahead and let's take a look at the 150 example. And now we're seeing close to a 50-50 split on all of them. And since, again, this, this is a 150 split, you're not going to see, um, well, we actually can see 50-50 on 150, but you're noticing that none of them are actually 100% equal to 50-50. There's a still a little bit of a deviation from the norm, but you'll notice that a 49-51 split on both of these occur, which is very close to 50-50. And on the other ones, the biggest deviation is a 45-55. So if I up this to 300, I guarantee it's going to get closer. And if I up that to 600, it's going to get even closer. So the larger the sample size, the smaller effect variance has. And, and really, the question is, well, what type of a role does that play on your poker game? The role it plays in your poker game is that, let's say, for example, these were a coin flip on situation of ace-king versus queens. In the short term, even as many as 15 times, which would actually be a lot to get all in, Ace King versus Queen, let's assume that you are Queens and you signify heads. Well, sometimes you're going to come ahead and you're going to win more than you should. And sometimes you're going to be on the other side where you're winning less than you should. So in the short term, when we get in these situations where we think we should win the hand, but there's a possibility that our opponent can win the hand, we should expect the unexpected in the short term. And if it happens, we should be okay with it if we play a lot of poker. And, and I put the caveat in there of if we play a lot of poker. Because again, remember, variance kind of dissipates over time. With more and more hands, with a larger sample size, you'll see expected results. So again, if we play 10 times as many hands with that all-in situation, if we did it 150 times, Ace King versus Queens, and maybe for some online players that might be a year's worth of playing. For live players that might be five years worth of playing, um, you're going to see closer to expected results. Now, this is just a basic example of a coin flip of Ace King versus Pocket Queens. Um, but you should understand, though, if we're getting in situations where we're a huge favorite, we shouldn't see as crazy a variance. There are plays that we call high variance and low variance play, and high variance plays are ones where it's closer to a coin flip scenario. For example, if we have an open in a straight draw plus a flush draw on the flop and our opponent flop top set, well, we're close to a coin flip situation in that scenario because we have 15 outs, but we have two cards to get there, so we have a lot of equity to get there. But if we get in the situations where it's very high variance, let's say we only have a flush draw and we're around a 36% favorite to hit our draw by the river, we get all in on the flop. What we should understand when we get into that situation, we should expect to lose close to 70% of the time. So, I mean, that's really 
the biggest difference in terms of variance and the different type of plays that you get into. And I could really just continue to discuss this for a long time, but I'm not going to. I am actually going to show you something else. So if you've never been to PokerDopa.com, they have several variance calculators. And what I did was I pulled up a cash game calculator. And what you can do is you can add in what your win rate is. You can add in a standard deviation from win, your win rate. So standard deviation would be um, in terms of, actually, let me just do this hover over here. So you'll notice that a standard deviation, they give you examples, and I did a six max because that's what I play, but you'll notice it's from 75 to 120 big blinds for 100. So the worse you are or or the more of an aggressive style of play that you play, you're going to have a higher standard deviation. People that play more conservative, they're going to have a lower standard deviation, and typically players that are better should have a lower standard deviation. Now I put a sample size of 50,000 hands because I want to show over various win rates and various types of opponents um, or types of players in terms of skill level where their win rate increases, I want to show how variance is really affected in their game from a best case scenario and a worst case scenario. So we start off with, before I look at the graph with you guys, we start off with a person that has a 2.5 big blind for 100 win rate with a standard deviation of 140. We then go to somebody that has a win rate of 5 BB per 100 with a standard deviation of 120. We then go to a person that has a win rate of 7.5 BB per 100 and a standard deviation of 100. And then we go to a person that has a win rate of 9 BB per 100 with a standard deviation of 80. And I could even take this up a notch one more. Let's actually go a notch one more. So let's click here, let's do a cash game calculator, and let's do 11.5 because I've been incrementing by that. We don't need to do an observed win rate. And then we'll drop theirs down to, let's say 60, and we'll do 50,000 hands. Now you could do 100,000 hands, but I think 50,000 is fine for what I'm trying to accomplish here. So let's start with the person with a very low win rate. The person with a very low win rate and a bit of a, um, a higher level of deviation that you would expect on, on the normal, what you're going to notice here is that this right here, this black line is their break-even point. Best case is this is how much they expect to win. They expect to win um, 11,667 uh, big blinds over this 40,000 hands, and it actually says 49,600, but it's fine. Worst case, they expect to lose just over around 10,000 um, and BB. So worst case, lose around 10,000 big blinds. Best case, win around 11,500 big blinds. For a person that's a marginal winner and they have a bit of variance in their game in terms of standard deviation, right? They win some and they lose some and there's some variance in their game because of the style that they play. As we start to improve, what you're going to notice is that this best case should jump up and the worst case should, should kind of be minimized in terms of the black line. So for somebody that has double the win rate of them, now we're up to 5 BB per 100, and their standard deviation now drops to 120, best case scenario, we're still at only around 11,000 hands, which is interesting. So here we were at 11,516, um, and here we are now at 11,119. And then also, worst case, it is now only 6,000 possible losing. Um, the other one was around 10,000, but now the worst case, they're only losing around 6,000 worst case scenarios. So you're noticing the worst case is getting better, which is good. And it also shows, I mean, let's just drop down here, that it'll also show you um, minimum bank loan requirements and stuff like that, but we're not going to get into that. So, I mean, if you want to look at that, I do talk about this in detail in another video. But I just really want to focus on these two. Okay, so now let's go to 7.5. So we're getting better. Our standard deviation is smaller, so the deviations from the norm should be more minimized now. Best case scenario, let's get this over here, um, 10,930. So this is dropping a little bit. It's actually staying pretty close to around where it was on the other two. But worst case should be getting should be getting better for us. So now we're up to around three thousand. So we went from around ten thousand potential losing big blinds to around six thousand potential losing big blinds, and now only around three thousand big blinds uh, potential worst case scenario playing fifty thousand hands with a win rate like this. If we even improve better to somebody that's really doing well. I mean, just if it's the micro stakes or. Um, it's the low stakes. I mean, we're just complete crusher at nine big blinds per 100 with a standard deviation of 80. And worst case scenario, we are only losing potentially only a thousand big blinds, so 10 buy-ins. 
and we're staying pretty even at our best possible um, win rate of around, it's still hovering around 11,000. So for all of them, it's still hovering around that at the top. And now we have somebody that has 11.5 BB per 100 with a standard deviation of 60 and still playing 50,000 hands. Worst case scenario, um, 1,500. Best case, 9,547. I don't even, this actually should be, let's recalculate this because this should actually be a lot better than the other one. I don't know why this is a, calculating it to be worse and this is quite interesting maybe it's because I put a half in there let's see what happens now so 9,000 and 1,947 so for some reason this is is um, is worse than this and I actually don't know why um, but it should be better like all the other ones it's kind of confusing to me to be honest why our win rate is lower than this one and that our loss is actually a bit higher but you should get the picture you should really get the picture of of what I'm trying to say and so I don't know what's going on with the calculator I'm just gonna close this one out I don't know why that works but when we go from two and a half BB per 100 to 5 BB per 100 to 7.5 BB per 100 up to 9 BB per 100 and we reduce the standard deviation you notice that that we stay pretty standard with best case for winning um, but for worst case scenario, I mean, at a two and a half BB per 100, we are potentially losing close to 10,000 big blinds. Um, so that's a lot. But when we get to around nine with our standard deviation decreasing, it's only around a thousand. So that was what I wanted to get out of this is to show you the effect that it has on your game. Skill level plays a huge role in variance, both in potential for losing and potential for winning. So if we look at all these, and if, if I take the standard deviation, so maybe I say this opponent plays in a more aggressive style, you're gonna notice that these numbers are gonna tweak. Because he plays more aggressive, there's a potential for him to win more, but there's a potential for him to lose more, but he's still losing then less than this person over here. Um, you know, roughly 10,000 over here losing, but only here losing around half of that. And now we're winning up to close to 13. So standard deviation is really a function of how good you play and also how aggressive you play. Because if we play high variance plays and we're good at what we're doing, we know we're going to get in these situations that kind of give us rocky results sometimes. But in the long run, we know they're going to work out for us. Um, but if we play a more conservative style, kind of like, um, you know, I guess an older person style of play um, or more of a nitty style of play, then we're going to see more results that are probably on par with what we ex should expect to see, but less deviation in it. Um, but yeah, so that's what I wanted to, to show you with PokerDope.com in their Poker Variance Calculator. They have multiple different calculators on here. I recommend you guys check them out. Um, and, and just kind of when you're thinking about variance, think about the sample size. And here's the thing. If we get in a situation where we're the favorite and our opponent sucks out on us, that's okay because we got all our money in with the best hand. So we got all in with a profitable situation. So we should be okay with that. That's really the biggest determining factor. People that, that don't understand variance and don't understand that over the long run, it's all going to even out and it really shouldn't even play a role, right? So if I bring this back up, in the long run, expected results will happen so if unexpected results happen in the short term just be okay with it you shouldn't be focused on if you actually won the hand or not you should be focused on if you got the money in a in a profitable situation and if you got the money in in a profitable situation where you expect to win in the long run then that's what matters the currency of poker is long-term expectation it's our long-term expected value of our plays it's not the one time we sit at the table and we hope to win one big pot or we hope to win one pot and get lucky. That's what gamblers do. That's what beginners do. But skilled poker players, we play long-term expectation. So that's variance in a nutshell. Um, if you guys have any questions about variance, let me know. What we're going to do for the next lecture is I'm going to talk more on the concept of winning plays. I'm going to talk about expected value. And so we're going to talk a bit more about that. And I think that really should kind of help solidify this information for you. So, yeah. So 
let's go ahead and let's switch back over to um, off my screen and let's conclude today's lecture. So hopefully after today's lecture, you have a better understanding of variance and how short term it's magnified and in the long run, it really doesn't play a role in poker because we should expect to see expected results. Now when I say long term, it's really going to vary from person to person if there's a casual live player. Long term for them may be 5 or 10 years where over the period of 5 or 10 years, they should see the expected results. But for an online player that puts in a lot of volume, easily, easily within a month to two months. So it really depends on how much volume you put in. Um, and you know that coin flip scenario kind of identifies that where I did 15 times sample and I did 150 times sample. So that's variance. Hopefully you guys got a lot out of it. Like I said, next lecture we're gonna talk about expected value. So we're gonna talk about uh, winning plays and losing plays. So expected value is either plus expected value, meaning it's profitable, or minus expected value, meaning it's unprofitable. So anyways, guys, that's going to conclude today's lecture. If you liked it, give it a thumbs up. Give it a click for the like. If you guys aren't subscribed, please subscribe to my YouTube channel. If you got any friend, if you got any family members, if you got any fellow poker players that you know, tell them about my channel. Tell them to subscribe as well. Tell them to check out everything we do. And also, if you guys like what you see on this channel and you want to sponsor, if you want to help support it, Check down below because you guys can help support and keep this channel running through my Patreon account. So anyways, guys, I really appreciate you guys watching today's video. Have an awesome day. Have an awesome weekend. And I will see you guys at the next video. Take care.